Welcome everyone and a big congratulations to the uh, team of Pushpari Dental College for bringing up this innovative idea of EPAP to success. I'm Dr. Priya from the Department of Oral Pathology, Anu Dental College, and I'll be dealing with the topic on periodontal ligament. And in periodontal ligament, we'll be actually looking at three uh, portions or three sessions. So basically, we'll be talking about the fibers which is present in the periodontal ligament, the different cells that you see, and the functions of periodontal ligament. So before we move on to what exactly is periodontal ligament, you have to learn this term called as periodontium. So perio means surrounding. So those structures which surround your tooth is called as periodontium. So it is basically made up of connective tissue organ, which has a covering uh, by an epithelium. And all these structures together is going to attach the teeth to the jaw. And it provides a continuing adapting apparatus for support of the teeth during function. So all these structures together, it is not just one component. There are two, three structures which forms a periodontium. So these structures, which is basically connective tissue, it can be a soft connective tissue or it can be a mineralized connective tissue. So these structures together help the teeth during function or it supports the teeth during function. And the different components of periodontium include cementum, periodontal ligament, alveolar bone and dentogingival junction along with gingiva. So these are the structures which forms periodontium. So it is cementum, which is a mineralized structure of your teeth. Periodontal ligament is a connective tissue, which is soft. Alveolar bone is again a connective tissue, which is again mineralized. Dentogingival junction is a junction between tooth and gingiva along with gingival epithelium of gingiva. So these form your periodontium. What is periodontal ligament? So periodontal ligament is one of the portions or one of the component of periodontia. So these are a uh, periodontal ligament is known by different terminologies, uh, desmodont, gomphosis, pericementum, it's called as a dental periosteum and so on. So periodontal ligament, remember it is a soft connective tissue. So the remaining structures of the teeth, what you see are mineralized connective tissue, especially dentin, cementum, all those are mineralized structures of your teeth, which is a connective tissue. And periodontal ligament is a soft connective tissue which originates from the dental follicle or the dental sac. Now, it's a complex soft tissue pro which provides continuity between two mineralized connective tissue. That is cementum on one side and bone on the other side. So, if you look at the picture, this is your periodontal ligament. It has bone on the other side and the small dark pink which you see is a cementum. So, it attaches both cementum and bone and the ligament will occupy the periodontal ligament space so this is another picture which shows this is your periodontal ligament and this is present inside the periodontal ligament space which is going to attach the cementum or the tooth to the bone on the other side the width of the periodontal ligament is between 0.1 to 0.38 millimeter and uh, as age increases, the width of the periodontal ligament decreases and it has a shape of an hourglass. That is, it is thin at the mid root region. So middle third of the root, it is very thin and it is, it takes a shape of an hourglass. It's usually seen in a radiograph. So when you take an IOPA or an X-ray, it is seen as a radiolucent space or a line which runs parallel to the root surface. And the space is around 0.4 to 1.5 millimeter on a radiograph. And usually this periodontal ligament space is narrower in permanent dentition than in deciduous. So this is how it uh, appears on a radiograph. This black small line which you see is your periodontal ligament space. This is the tooth and on the other side is your bundle bone or alveolar bone. This is also another radiograph which shows a wider periodontal ligament space. So this what you see is your periodontal ligament space. When you look at the histology of periodontal ligament, it contains cells and it contains your extracellular substance. Now the extracellular substance is divided into fibers and also it has a ground substance. 
The fibers are split into collagen fibers or they are made up of mainly two types that is collagen fibers and elastic fibers. The collagen fibers are different kinds. So you have the principal collagen fibers which forms the main periodontal ligament. Accessory to that, you have the attachment of the periodontal ligament which is called as a Sharpe's fibers. Then you have other secondary fibers or other accessory fibers like secondary fibers, indifferent fiber plexus and reticular fibers. Your elastic fibers are divided into oxitalin, elanin and your matured elastic fibers. Then when you look at the ground substance, it has different components that is your glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans and glycoproteins. So this entire thing forms your periodontal ligament which is made up of cells and you have your extracellular substance with fibers and ground substance. So we look into detail about the different fibers which forms your periodontal. So the majority of the fibers of the periodontal ligament is type 1 collagen fibers followed by type 3. Now when you look at these collagen fibers they are actually arranged in bundles. You don't see them as single strands like this. They are basically arranged in bundles and each bundle is like a sliced rope and when it undergoes remodeling it is the individual strands which undergo mod remodeling it's not the entire bundle it is a single strand which is within the bundle which undergoes remodeling and the entire fiber together the bundle will maintain the overall architecture and function so we'll move on to the principal fibers uh, of the periodontal ligament remember these principal fibers which you are going to talk about are arranged in bundles so they are actually arranged in different sets you have five major fibers among the principal fibers that includes the alveolar crest fibers horizontal oblique apical and interradicular fibers so they are the or they form these sets of fibers forms the principal fibers or the major fibers of your periodontal ligament so when you look at this picture this is your uh, alveolar crest fibers which you see in the alveolar crest region these fibers followed by horizontal oblique apical and interradicular fibers so when you look at the uh, first set of fibers that is your alveolar crest root fibers this is basically it has remember all these fibers have has an origin and it has an insertion so all this start will when you look at the origin keep it to the cementum and the uh, attachment on the bone is what you have to see so it starts from the cementum below the cemento enamel junction and it runs downwards outwards to insert into the rim of the alveolus or your bundle bone and the ma major function addresses tilting intrusive forces extrusive forces and rotational forces so these are the forces which it resists so when you look at the direction it starts from the cementum it runs downwards outwards to be inserted into the alveolar crest this is how it runs When you look at the next set of fibers, that is basically your horizontal group of fibers, it is what you see just below your alveolar crest fibers. So horizontal is usually seen just below the alveolar crest fibers and why it is termed as horizontal because of the direction. So it runs at right angle to the long axis of the tooth. So from the cementum to the bone in a horizontal manner. And the functions of these fibers are basically to resist the horizontal and the tipping forces. So what you see just below your alveolar crest fibers which runs in a perpendicular direction is called as your horizontal fibers. The next major group which you have is the oblique group. Now remember the oblique group are the, has the maximum number of fibers or they are the most numerous among all the principal fibers of periodontal ligament. Again, when looking at, it, at its direction, since it runs obliquely, it's called as the oblique fibers. From cementum, it runs in an oblique direction and it is inserted into the bone coronally. So from below upwards, it will be running and it resists vertical and intrusive forces. So when you look at the direction, if this is your tooth and this is a bone, 
your fibers will run like this. So the oblique fibers from cementum, it runs coronally to your alveolar crest. The next group of fibers are the apical group of fibers, which is present in the apex of the root. So it is seen below the root in the apical region, basically at the base of the socket. And the functions of this is to resist forces of luxation and dipping. So it prevents the mobility of the teeth. And one thing which you have to remember is it is not seen in incompletely formed roots or not seen in newly erupted tooth. So when a new, uh, new tooth is erupting or when there is eruption, usually remember the roots are not formed. So you don't tend to see these apical group of fibers. And the last group which you see is the interradicular groups. Inter means between two roots. So it is usually found in the roots of multi-rooted teeth. And again, it runs between the cement to the bone of uh, the in between. Uh, you have interdental bone in between the two roots. So it will run from cementum to the bone. And the forces that it uh, prevents or it resists is basically the tipping force, the docking force and the luxator forces. Usually these sets of fibers are lost in case when there is uh, gingival or periodontal ligament pathology. So especially in case of gingival recession, where there is infection of the percussion area or when there is inflammation. So these ligaments will disappear during any inflammatory changes which happens in the percussion area. So this is your different groups of fibers. What you see is your alveolar crest fibers, which runs from cementum to the bone in a downward direction. Horizontal fibers, which is perpendicular. Oblique fibers is exactly the opposite direction to that of your alveolar crest, which runs from cementum coronally upwards to be inserted into the bone. You have the apical fibers, which is pre present in the apical area of the root. And then you have your interradicular fibers, which is present between two roots, which attaches from the cementum to the bone. So this is a gist of the entire fibers we have studied, all the major five fibers, which is put into a tabular column. So it is made easier. So you have the origin insertion with the functions and the, and the extra points which you have to remember is the maximum number of fibers that you see is related to your oblique which occupies two-third of the periodontal ligament and apical fibers it is not seen in incompletely formed roots or not seen in newly erupted tooth and also interradicular fibers are the fibers to disappear when you have an inflammation or an infection of your periodontal ligament. The other fibers which you have to study is your Sharpies fibers. Now Sharpies fibers are basically the ends of your periodontal ligament fiber. So the uh, periodontal ligament fiber, uh, remember if you remember, it is inserted on either side into the cementum of the tooth and also on the bone on the other side. So the inserted portion of your periodontal ligament is called as your Sharpies fibers, the ends of the principal fibers which is going to be embedded or inserted into the cementum. And when you compare between the Sharpies fibers, which is present in the bone and in the cementum, there is a slight difference. It is more numerous and smaller sized fibers, which you see in the cementum. And in the acellular cementum, these fibers are fully mineralized. So that is something which you have to see. The Sharpies fibers, which is embedded, is a mineralized fiber. And these fibers, when it is mineralized, the end of these fibers will be covered with minerals which projects like a stub or a, like a nail head because they'll be covered with clusters of minerals. So this is how it is. So if you observe the diagram here, these are your bundles of collagen fibers. And when you look at uh, the cementum or the bone, you can see small black fibers which is inserted. So these are your Sharpies fibers. This is how it is basically the bundles and the inserted portion which you see within the alveolar bone and within the cementum is called as your Sharpies fibers. And remember these Sharpies fibers are mineralized. They are not like your periodontal ligament fibers. The ends are mineralized which gives further attachment uh, or further strength to these fibers for maintaining the attachment between the tooth and the bone.
This is a diagrammatic representation of the Sharpie's fibers, the periodontal ligament spaces here. So when they are inserted into the cementum, you see them as perpendicular fibers. It is perpendicularly arranged. So these perpendicular fibers, these small black lines which you see, are your Sharpie's fibers. There is another set of fibers which is called as transalveolar fibers. Now transalveolar across the alveolar bone. So these are few fibers which pass through the alveolar process to continue as principal fibers of adjacent periodontal ligament. So they are fibers of the periodontal ligament which is going to run through the bone and attach to the other adjacent periodontal ligament fibers. So it is a continuum of your principal fibers of periodontal ligament. Transalveolar fibers are the fibers which is in continuity with your periodontal ligament fibers. Only thing is that they continue through the bone to reach out to the other adjacent periodontal ligament fibers. The next group of fibers other than your principal fibers, you have something called as a secondary fibers that is secondary to your principal fibers or major fibers which is located in between or among the principal fibers. So they are present, they are smaller fibers which is present among the principal fibers which does not have a direction and they are randomly oriented. They are very haphazard and random. Basically they are the new uh, formed collagen fiber. So when you see a secondary fiber, it's a newly formed collagen fiber which is more seen adjacent to your blood vessels or your nerve, uh, nerves which is seen within the periodontal ligament. So the next group of fibers which you see uh, in relation other than your uh, principal fibers are your indifferent fiber plexuses. So basically, they are small collagen fibers which is seen in association with your large principal collagen fibers and they seem to run in all directions. Again, they do not have directions. So these small fibers which you see are in between your collagen fibers are your indifferent fiber plexus and it is a network. So that is why it's called as a plexus. The next set of fibers which you can see within the periodontal ligament is reticular fibers. Now reticular fibers are collagen fibers itself but they are immature collagen fibers which is considered as your type 3 collagen which is large diameter fiber. So when compared to your principal fibers or the type 1 collagen fibers these are large diameter fibers and which usually has a love for silver stain. So they are argidophilic. So they take up silver stain and seen associated with basement membrane or blood vessels and epithelial cells. There is another group of uh, collagen fibers or another set of collagen fibers which is called as intermediate fibers. Now whether they are truly collagen fibers apart from the major fibers and the accessory fibers you studied. So whether they truly exist is something uh, still under hypothesis. Now here what happens is when you have the insertion of collagen fibers, the origin and the insertion, so they are originating from the cement of examen and they are getting inserted to the bone. In the mid region of the root, so exactly in the center, there is a distinct appearance. So you get a zone of distinct appearance. Now why is that zone distinct? So that zone they thought it to be intermediate plexus. So when the fibers from cementum and bone when they meet uh, basically in the center of the uh, periodontal ligament space it has a distinct appearance and that area with the distinct appearance is called as intermediate plexus. So this is how it appears. You have bone on the uh, one side and cementum on the other side and in the center you have something very different. There's a different appearance. So this different appearance they gave or termed it as intermediate plexus. Now what exactly is this thing is a hypothesis. So this is how it appears in the center. It has got a distinct appearance which is termed as intermediate plexus where they, where they thought it is in between you have the mixing up of the collagen fibers or branching out of the collagen fibers which gives you a plexus like appearance. So the different theories behind the formation of inter uh, intermediate plexus or this distinct stone uh, 
they initially they thought the first theory which was uh, proposed was it is actually an area of high metabolic activity where there is active remodeling taking place during tooth movement this is the first theory which was put forward why it has a distinct appearance is because they thought this area is an area with high metabolic activity now this area was disapproved because the metabolic activity is more towards the ends of the collagen fibers rather than in the center so the terminals near cementum and bone are more active than the center portion so this theory was disapproved the second theory which was put forward is that the uh, fibers they run across the entire width of the periodontal ligament so it is a continuous stretch of fiber which runs from the cementum to the bone and in the center they meet and they branch out or they join with the adjacent fibers to form a three dimensional network that is why you get this distinct appearance now again this theory was disapproved because it is not a single fiber which is extending from one length to the other end so they are bundles of fiber so if you take one collagen uh, principal fiber it is basically bundles so again this the theory was disapproved and the third theory which was put forward was this is a zone with a site of active remodeling during eruption so during eruption uh, it is a zone of shear and it is a site of remodeling so again this was approved and now what they thought is it is an artifact of a, something which is present because of some other reason which is actually seen as a result of plane of section because the collagen bundles overlap with each other that is how you when you are cutting the section you get such an artifact the next set of fibers apart from collagen fibers what you see are your elastic fibers so if you remember the collagen fibers we learned the principal fibers or the major collagen fibers then sharpies fibers secondary fibers in different fiber plexes reticular fibers which are mainly the immature collagen fibers and apart from all that you have a zone in the center which is considered as intermediate plexus which is actually an artifact and not a group of fiber the next Thing what you see are your elastic fibers. Uh, elastic fibers you have again three types, which wherein you have your mature elastin fibers and the immature fibers. Here it's called as elanin fibers or oxytalin fibers. The immature collagen fibers are called as reticular fibers. While your immature elastic fibers are your oxytalin fibers and elanin fibers. now when you take elastin into consideration or the mature fibers into consideration remember the elastic fibers is always present as a meshwork which is made up of elastic lamellae consisting of elastic fibers surrounded by microfibrils and usually seen present in the arterial wall so elastic fibers are more common to the arterial walls this is how it is you get your single elastic uh, molecules with your microfibrils when they undergo cross linking this is how they appear which wherein you have your microfibrils and your elastin fibers which are cross linked with each other when uh, the next fibers among the elastic fibers is a immature elastic fiber which is called as oxytalin fiber which only consists of microfibrillar component without the coprotein or elastin so it is only the microfibrils you don't see the elastin here and this is more common in blood vessels of periodontal so they run in a vertical direction and when you take within the periodontal ligament it is seen longitudinally or perpendicular to your collagen fibers and they terminate in artery veins or lymphatics so these are your oxytalin fibers which you see the ones which is running perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth these fibers which is vertical in direction perpendicular to your collagen fibers the next immature fibers are your elanin fibers which is basically bundles of microfibrils embedded with a small quantity of elastin so the mature elastic fibers contain both the components that is elastin with microfibrils which are cross linked to each other oxytalin fibers they contain only microfibrils without the elastin while elanin fibers are microfibrils with small quantity of your elastin 
So they are usually found along with oxytalin and form a meshwork and they sheath the collagen fiber bundle. So they are seen covering the collagen fibers. The functions of these immature uh, elastic fibers include regulating the vascular flow in relation to the tooth function and they have a elastic nature so they have a tendency to expand in response to your tensional forces. So this is how it is if you remember elastin microfibrils both together form your mature elastic fibers. So without the uh, without these elastin and only the microfibrils it is oxytalin and a small quantity of uh, elastin fibers with microfibrils is your elanin fibers. We move on to the next portion of periodontal ligaments. So we covered with fibers. The next include the cells of your periodontal ligament. So what are the different cells that you can see within the periodontal ligament? So you have synthetic cells, you have resorptive cells, progenitor, epithelial cells and defense cells. So these are your five group of cells which you can see within the periodontal ligament. Now synthetic cells are those cells which produce something either it could be cementum or it could be fibers or it could be bone so they include fibroblast osteoblast cementoblast the resorptive cells are those which resorb the tooth or resorb the periodontal ligament or the adjacent bone so they include fibroblast so remember here fibroblast has got two functions it is a synthetic cell as well as it is a resorptive cell and the other resorptive cells that which resorbs the bone is your osteoclast and those which res uh, resorb the tooth or the cementum it's called a cementoclast or your odontoclast. The progenitor cells which forms or gives rise to all these synthetic cells or resorptive cells that includes your undifferentiated stem cells. Then you have your remnants of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath which is called as the epithelial cell rest of malas. And your defense cells which include the mast cells, the eosinophils, the macrophages. So all your defense cells which are seen uh, within, within your body can be present in your periodontal ligament, especially mast cells and macrophages. So moving on to the first cell which you see is your fibroblast, which is a major cell seen within the periodontal ligament because it is this cell which produces your periodontal ligament. So they are basically large cells with extensive or abundant cytoplasm and since it produces your collagen fibers or produces protein you have a lot of RER and Golgi apparatus. So that is what you see within your organelles, lots of ribosomes and Golgi apparatus. Usually the cell is uh, stellate shape or fusiform shape and they have a well-developed cytoskeleton or a backbone. So these are your spindle-shaped or fusiform-shaped or stellate-shaped fibroblast which is seen parallel to the collagen fibers. Remember the fibroblast is always arranged parallel to the collagen fiber it produces. And it is attached to the collagen fiber. So this cell is never separated from the collagen fiber. It is always attached to the collagen fiber by a type of attachment plaque called as fibronexus. The attachment plaque between the collagen fiber and the fibroblast is called as fibronexus. Like I had told you before, fibroblast has got two functions. It's got a dual function. It produces collagen fibers as well as it helps in the remodeling or destruction or degradation of your collagen fibers. So they usually synthesize collagen which is small fibrils and it is aggregated into bundles of fibers outside the cell. So within the cell it forms only the protein and outside the cell only you have the formation of fibrils and fibers. The next cell is your osteoblast. Osteoblast are those cells which synthesize the bone or it forms your bone and usually seen on the bone surface. Now those which are seen on the surface of the bone, it could be a functional cell or it could be a resting cell. If it's a functional cell, 
it is a plump osteoplast. The osteoplast that you see is a plump osteoplast. And if it's a resting cell, it is a flattened cell which you see on the surface of the bone. So when the next set of synthetic cell which you see is a cementoblast. So those cells which produce cementum and they are usually seen within cellular cementum. And remember these cells always form the first layer that is your organic matrix which is called as a cementoid and that is the one which undergoes mineralization to form your cementum. These cementoblasts originate from the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells of your periodontal ligament and also they originate from dental follicle. The cells are usually round to cuboidal in shape. They have a large nucleus and lots of organelles, especially those organelles associated with protein synthesis. Another thing which you have to remember is presence of cytoplasmic process. Now these cementocytes or cementoblasts, basically the cementocytes, that is your mature cementoblasts, they help or they have a cytoplasmic process which is directed towards the periodontal. If this is a cell, it has processes like this, extensions from your cell. These processes are directed towards the periodontal ligament. So if your periodontal ligament is it, the direction of these processes are towards the periodontal ligament. They are not seen throughout or on the entire surfaces of surface of the cell. Now why is that? Because it is a periodontal ligament which contains your blood vessels and the nutrients from these blood vessels are perceived through these cytoplasmic extensions. Cementum is avascular. So obviously the nutrition has to come from your periodontal ligament. That is why the cytoplasmic extensions are directed towards the periodontal ligament. So these are cementoblasts which is seen line, uh, lining your surface of the cementum, especially your cellular cementum. So this is in just all the cells which we studied. That is the synthetic cells. You have the fibroblast osteoblast one forms the bone the other one forms the fibers collagen fibers so this is the shape of the cell or the microscopy of the cell and these are the functions so other than formation of collagen fibers it also helps in remodeling it maintains the width of the periodontal ligament and also produces growth factors and similarly osteoblast forms the bone also it regulates in bone remodeling the third cell which we had studied is cementoblast which originates from dental follicle as well as differentiated mesenchymal cells again cuboidal cells with cytoplasmic processes directed towards the periodontal ligament and their function is to produce cement. So we covered up with synthetic cells. The next set of cells are your resorptive cells. Resorptive cells are those which causes resorption or those which destroy the mineralized tissues or your soft tissues. So osteoclast is the one which resorbs the bone and it's a uh, multinucleated giant cell. So basically it's a giant cell, multinucleated. So you see uh, numerous nuclei. So it varies between two to 10 nucleus. It can be also single nucleated. And where do they come from? So they usually originate from monocytes, so blood monocytes, circulating monocytes or monocytes of the blood. They come into the tissue, they unite together or fuse together to form your multinucleated giant cells. And these cells are usually seen in a bay-like area or a recess, which is called as Hauschip's laconate. So it creates a space on the surface of the bone or a dent on the surface of the bone and it will be sitting in that. When you look at the morphology of the cell, it has abundant Golgi apparatus but very little rough endoplasmic reticulum or ribosomes because it does not synthesize protein and it has more of lysozymes and mitochondria and also it contains acid phosphatase enzyme and the main function is to resorb bone. So this is how you see an osteoclast on the surface of the bone which is undergoing resorption. This is the bay that you see which is your Hauschip's laconate. It's a multinucleated giant cell and if you look at the morphology it has two surfaces. This is the resorption bay. It has towards the resorption bay the cell membrane is thrown into folds which is called as a ruffled border. The opposite end 
is a smooth border which you see which is called as a functional secretory domain. So opposite end the smooth area which you see is a functional secretory domain and towards the resorptive surface the cell membrane is thrown into folds which is called as a ruffle border or the striated border. And the area that is the two ends of the cell where it attaches to the surface of the bone is called as a clear zone, this area and this area. Or it's called as a sealing zone. Now why it's called as a clear zone? Because this area does not contain organelles other than filaments which is used for attachment. So it contains only filaments which helps in the attachment of the cell to the surface of the bone. That is why it's called as a clear zone because there's no organelles present. Why it is considered as a sealing zone? Because of these attachment filaments which you have, it holds a cell firmly onto the surface of the bone and it seals this environment which is present below. So whichever area has to be resorbed is sealed away from the remaining area. So it creates a micro environment. That's why it's called as a sealing zone. This is an electron microscopic view of the osteoclast and when it resorbs the bone or the basically the bone, it resorbs the bone by two processes. There are two sequence of events which happens during resorption. First sequence which happens is always remember it is removal of your inorganic matrix. So it is always dissolution of your inorganic matrix which happens first and then only the organic matrix will undergo degrada uh, degradation. So the osteoclast will release acids or hydrogen ions which is going to help in the dissolution of your calcium and phosphate ions. And once the minerals are dissolved, the organic matrix gets exposed and then that will undergo enzymatic degradation. So again, as in tabular column, you have your osteoclast where the origin is a circulating monocyte. It's a multinucleated giant cells with more number of mitochondria and lysozymes and which helps in the remodeling of bone. Similarly, you have cementoplast and fibroblast. The other kind of cells which you see are your different cells. Now, different cells include mast cells, macrophage and eosinophils. So, mast cells are again commonly located adjacent to your blood vessels. So, remember all these inflammatory cells that you see within uh, are usually seen near to blood vessels. The origin is from hematopoietic stem cell. So when you look at a mast cell, it is a round cell, which is oval or round in shape basically, with less number of organelles. And the cytoplasm contains granules. So within the granules, you see heparin and histamine. So it helps in the proliferation of endothelial cells and mesenchymal cells. Macrophage is the largest cell with a kidney shaped or a horseshoe shaped nucleus. So that is some key identifying feature for a macrophage. The nucleus that you see is kidney shaped or horseshoe shaped. Again, less number of uh, ribosomes and more of lysozymes because it's a phagocytic cell. It helps in phagocytosis as well as it helps, it helps in the secretion of certain growth factors. Eosinophil, as we all know, again, it is a small cell with a spectacle shaped nucleus and it contains a lot of eosinophilic granules with crystalloid structures. So this is a mast cell which is an oval shaped cell and a lot of eosinophilic granules within the cytoplasm which is basically a histamine. This is a macrophage with a kidney shaped nucleus and this is an eosinophil with eosinophilic granules and the nucleus is spectacle shaped or bilobed. So this is how you see in an HNE stained section. The next set of cell which you see within the peritontal ligament is the epithelial cell rest of Melas. So these are resting cells. That's why it's called a cell rest because they are inactive cells and they originate from Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, remnants of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. So the morphology, when you look at these cells, they are basically a network of cells or strands of cells. So they can either occur as islands or small strands or as network or like a tube, it'll be, but it will be arranged parallel to the surface of the root. 
and when you take a cross section they usually appear as a cluster so if you take a cross section of these cells you tend to see them as a cluster which is surrounded by a, uh, surrounded by a basal lamina sometimes you can see a network or it has a lace like arrangement which is seen closer to the cemental surface if you take an individual cell these cells are usually cuboidal in shape with a prominent nucleus scanty cytoplasm and less number of organelles and among the different organelles mitochondria are seen to be numerous rather than ribosomes so this is how you see in cross section a cluster of cells these are your cells which are seen in cluster surrounded by a basal lamina so this border which you see is a basal lamina these are strands small small strands again clusters which is seen parallel to the surface of your cementum more closer to cementum you will tend to see so when you look at the distribution of these cells towards the older age they are less in number it's more seen in our children because the hertwig's epithelial root sheath has undergone degradation and obviously it's more common in children and it's usually near to the cemental surface so around 25 microns from the cementum surface and you tend to see more of them in the percussion area and uh, in the second decade you can see them more located to the apical region and later in gingiva what is the importance of these cell rest so initially they are inactive so in the resting phase they are inactive but at times because of certain changes in the body they can get activated and once they get activated these cells form the cystin tumors odontogenic cystin tumors and also it can undergo calcification and form something called as a cementicle a calcified portion of your cementum so it forms cementicles which are seen within the periodontal ligament the other group of cells are your progenitor cells or undifferentiated mesenchymal cells stem cells so they are small size cells which is closer to the blood vessels and they are the cells which form your fibroblast osteoblast and cementoblast so they are precursors to these three different cells next thing what we see is something called as cementicle so we finished up with the entire histology of periodontal ligament that has been read on uh, the fibers the different fibers the different cells we see within the periodontal ligament so remember the cells that you see are synthetic cells resorptive cells epithelial cell rest of mallas defense cells and your progenitor cells so these were different cells which we see within the periodontal ligament so this term we already came across that is your epithelial cell rest can undergo calcification and these calcified bodies which you see within the periodontal ligament is called as cementicles so basically cementicles are calcified bodies which is seen inside the periodontal ligament and more towards older age group so it is seen more towards older age group they can be found either freely lying within the periodontal ligament or they can fuse with the cementum or they can fuse with each other to form a bigger sized cementicle usually when it attached to the periodontal ligament it is called as ex cementoso so when the cementicle attaches itself to the periodontal ligament it is termed as ex cementoso and like we said they originate from your epithelial uh, cell rest which is undergone degeneration now these cell rest actually form as a seed or a nidus for calcification so it forms as a seed or a nidus around which it undergoes calcification so these are cementicles which you see within the periodontal ligament they are calcified bodies they can be free free ones or they can see embedded within the cementum or they can be seen attached to the surface of the cement the last part of periodontal ligament is the functions of periodontal ligament and the age changes which we see within periodontal ligament so we move on to the functions of periodontal ligament the major function is basically attachment function that is it helps to hold the tooth within the socket or helps in the attachment of the teeth to the bone or the socket the other functions include sensory nutritive protective 
eruptive, homeostatic, formative and resorptive. So these are different functions of your peritonteal ligament. Moving on to the first one that is attachment function. Like I told you it helps in holding the teeth firmly to the socket or to the bone and these fibers they act as a shock observer. So any stress that falls onto the periodontal ligament or onto the teeth are observed by observed by your periodontal ligament. So they are like a hydraulic damper or a shock observer and it has a viscoelastic system that is because it contains ground substance and these fibers have a nature to stretch. So together it forms as a viscoelastic system. Eruptive function, it is always the fibers which helps in eruption of the teeth. So the cells, that is a fibroblast along with your matrix and the vascular uh, vasculature helps or enables eruption. Protective, like we already discussed, it acts as a shock observer. So it observes the forces which are directed onto the surface of the tooth and transmits to your underlying alveolar bone. Nutritive, since it contains a lot of blood vessels, it is the one which provides nutrition to cementum, bone to some extent and it is the blood vessels which carries all your anabolites. Formator, because it contains cells uh, which are synthetic cells, so it forms your alveolar bone, cementum and also your fibroblasts and moreover it contains your undifferentiated cells which can give rise to all these three types of cells. Homeostasis is maintenance of your periodontal ligament. So remodeling activity happens here. So it has a formative function as well as a resorptive function which helps in the maintenance and the health of your periodontal ligament. And it has a high turnover rate and preserves the width of your periodontal ligament. Sensory presence of nerves which helps in uh, transmitting tactile pressure as well as pain sensation and it has a propio uh, receptive mechanism because it can detect the various forces which is applied to the surface of the teeth. The last part of periodontal ligament is the eight changes that happens within the ligament. So we read on the different histology that is the fibers as well as cells the functions of periodontal ligament and finally the different changes which happens within the periodontal ligament with age. So when you look at the age changes the first thing which you notice is formation of your calcified body which is called a cementicle. So remember as age advances the number of cementicles are going to increase. The other changes which you can see is decrease in the number of cells within the periodontal ligament and also in the functional activity of periodontal ligament. There will be a decreased collagen turnover rate or the remodeling is going to decrease. Elastic fibers are going to decrease. And also another thing which we had talked about in the beginning of the chapter is that the width of the ligament is going to decrease with age. So obviously the masticatory efficiency of the periodontal ligament that is to hold on to the forces is going to decrease. The functional capacity is going to decrease with age. So these are the changes which you can see with age. Thank you and have a good day.